Hey, how you doing? This is Pete Madsen from LearnBluesGuitarNow.com and the song we're working on today is Black Matty. Um, this is based on the playing of Robert Belfour, uh, Mississippi blues uh, player, guitarist. Uh, there are different versions of uh, Black Matty out there. R.L. Burnside has a version and I'm sure there's many more that I'm, I'm not thinking of right at the top of my head. But I like this song. When I heard uh, Robert Belfour play this this song, it was um, a, a really cool open G tuning with this monotonic bass. So, um, just to get, get in tune first, we're going to be in open G tuning, which is D, G, D, G, B, and D. And this is a monotonic bass or dead thumb bass, which means we're just playing a single string. And in this case, it's the fifth string, which is our G note. Okay. Let me play through this and then we'll break it apart. Okay, so this is a pretty open-ended song. There's two chords here. There's the G chord, which we have these little runs. And then there's a C chord, which in G tuning, which is actually, it looks like a regular C chord, but the note on the bottom here is a uh, B flat, so it makes it a C7, and uh, the seventh is in the, uh, the bass note. Really great sounding chord. I love this. And this is where the vocal occurs, just over this chord. Oh, Black Matty ain't got a change of blow. Okay. Uh, but most of the action occurs over the G chord, all the little instrumental fills and uh, the basic groove. So. basic groove is starting off um, with me sliding on the second string from the uh, second to the third fret. All the while I mean, I'm going to be keeping this dead thumb quarter note bass pattern. So as you're tapping your foot, so you might want to just start that to get used to the keeping the bass with that first riff. The second riff it's this little triplet run where I'm pulling off on the second string, first fret, and then playing the third string. Um, okay, and then a little bass run. So basically, that's just uh, the fifth string at the third fret slight bend, open fifth string, 
sixth string, third fret, and then fifth string open again. first part of our groove and then the second part of our groove I'll be fretting the second string at the uh, first fret and the third string at the third fret still keeping that dead thumb bass Where that C chord comes in. Again, it just looks like a regular C, but it's a C7 with the B flat and the bass. say the song is pretty open-ended you can hang on those grooves for quite a bit of time it sounds really good just you know get your foot stomping <laughs> these little breaks in between verses. Uh, the first one I did involves me barring the top three strings and then I'm going to use my pinky on the third string at the sixth fret and I'm pl plucking both the third and the second string which by themselves sounds kind of weird ugly but what I'll do is I'll slide quickly and that has a cool sound. You might notice that I'll slide with the pinky, and then I'll come when I come back uh, to that fifth fret, I use my ring finger. It's more comfortable for me to bring in my, my ring finger on the fifth fret. But for the little slide thing, the backward slide, it's like my pinky wants to come down here to the fifth fret. So that makes that slide a little easier. Another break we'll do is we slide from the third fret on the second string up to the fifth fret. Playing the first string at the fifth fret, and then come up to the eighth fret on the first string. You can put a little bend in there if you want. And these are breaks that are similar to things like Robert Johnson would do, and maybe even Sun House. Um, it's it's like what they something I might do over C chord, but in this case, where really the chord still is implied as a G. And we can make up a lot of other different breaks, but those sort of uh, two primary ones are a good place to start and then play those in conjunction with the groove and you should be good to go. <laughs> 